Why do trees have rings? Most people know that you can tell the age of a tree by cutting it down and then counting the number of rings through its trunk. Interestingly, the same is also true of human and dinosaur teeth. As trees grow taller, they also grow fatter to support the weight of their own boughs and branches, trees being self-supporting structures. There are two types of growth in a tree. Primary growth is the growth of the roots and the branches outwards as they search for more moisture from the ground and more sun from the sky. Secondary growth is the addition of cells to the existing trunk of the tree, which is what causes its diameter to increase. In most seasonal climates, trees grow at different rates throughout the year. The so-called early wood from early in the growing cycle is lighter and less dense. Late wood from when the growth rate slows down is darker and more dense. So this creates a discernible ring for each cycle, making it easy to count them and work out how old the tree is in years. Although it should be noted that trees do not always produce one ring per year, a mid-season drought can see it produce two rings, two spurts of growth, while extreme cold can see a ring mist because virtually no growth occurs. So we're now getting into the bit of this video that you didn't know about, so for more of this sort of stuff, why not subscribe? Also, trees in tropical areas where conditions are fairly constant have less pronounced growth rings and sometimes none at all. Palm trees do not produce growth rings, making it impossible to date Las Vegas casinos. Though that's largely because the palm trees are plastic. Rings can actually tell us a bit more than we imagined. The size of the ring tells us whether the tree had a good or a bad year, as excessively dry or cold years produce smaller rings. The tree struggled to grow as much. This ultimately leads to the science of dendrochronology. The father of all this was an American astronomer called A. E. Douglas, who realized that he could use tree rings to study the historic effect of sunspots on the Earth's temperature. Using the rings of several different but long-lived trees, it's a relatively simple matter to build up a climatic chronology going back hundreds or even thousands of years. The effect of climate variation within a localised area will be to create similar ring patterns in trees of different ages. So, for example, you could match a ring from a 300-year-old tree you've just cut down with a similar ring from a 300-year-old tree that was cut down 200 years ago to give you a 500-year-long picture of climate change. So by looking for familiar ring patterns from the records built up, dendrochronology makes it possible to date old buildings, old ships, or indeed anything with a wooden structure. So it should technically be possible to arrive at the age of Jeremy Clarkson's head. And as I said earlier on, examination of his teeth will confirm that he's a dinosaur. Yeah, I don't know how old Jeremy Clarkson's head is, um, if I knew more about prehistory, I'd probably be able to date it by working out what sort of dinosaur it is, but I don't, so the alternative, I suppose, would be to cut it in half and count rings.